Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. We've got to talk about Invest 95L. It is way out there and we're going to talk about things you need to worry about and more importantly things you don't need to worry about. But I want to give you as much heads up and kind of show you what's happening in the Atlantic because we are heading towards the peak of hurricane season and regardless of whether anything's heading our way, this is the time of year you need to pay attention to the tropics because this is when we see the most activity. So first things first, what's going on in the tropics right now? Love looking at this uh, imagery as we take a look at the uh, all the invest areas and the water temperatures. Just gorgeous, gorgeous information out there from Mr. Berg here. He does some great stuff on his website. And I'll show you some of his other products here. But um, first things first, you see that the most interesting system and probably the biggest concern is right here is Invest 95L. Behind it is Invest 96L. Um, those invest names, someone asked me about it yesterday, which was a great question. We go through 90 to 99, these numbers for invest areas, and we just rotate through them. The, the 90 through 99 is just to give them a designation so we can track them before they become tropical systems, run the models on them, have satellite imagery look at them. And the L the, uh, at the end of the number just stands for the Atlantic Basin. So they do the same thing in the Pacific, um, Eastern Pacific, Central Pacific, Western Pacific. So 95L is our biggest concern right now because it's moving into an environment you can see is very warm water also 96 cells moving in warm water both of these are likely to recurve and they could have an impact on each other but the big question here is how much of a recurvature and does it threaten the united states i do think there is a reason to pay attention to this storm mainly because the consensus plot which is taking all of the models and putting them together shows a pretty consistent track north of the big islands south of bermuda but well off the east coast in about seven to eight days as a category four storm so the fact that this could be a major hurricane is one of the main reasons we need to pay attention to it but there is some good reason to feel that it's going to stay off the east coast let's focus in on the satellite imagery quickly just to show you a close-up view i think it's already a tropical depression and you're likely going to see it designated as a tropical depression or a potential tropical cyclone and you hear that term people go i thought they were hurricanes they're all tropical cyclones. Just depending on where the cyclone, tropical cyclone is, we give them different names. So it's a potential tropical cyclone. Eventually it will get a name, but I, I would suspect sometime today we're gonna have some of the first tracks coming out. Let's show you some of the model tracks. So this was the morning runs on the 12Z runs, all pretty consistent, showing it somewhere north of the of the islands there um, in about, you know, like I said, seven to eight days. Um, let's look at the intensity guidance. I'm going to move my head out of the way here. This is probably the biggest concern is we're pretty consistent guidance as well, not only for where it's going, but it's going to be a really strong hurricane. Um, some of the new modeling this year, the intensity modeling, which did really well with the Adelia, um, the HFSA, HAFSB, SSB, I should say, all show Cat 4, Cat 5. That's pretty consistent. Just shows a slower ramp up than some of the other models, but that's something to keep a close eye on. That's potentially a significant hurricane heading our way. So let's look at the ensembles. I like showing them all at once. I'm going to move my head over here. Um, you can see just the ensembles all together. I'll back this up and you can see they're all pretty consistent. When you hear the word ensembles, it's not one single model. It's running different variations of the model and showing all of them. This is really the way to forecast. Some people freak out on social media because untrained meteorologists and people who just like to scare people post one single output and they don't show you the 99% of the other ones. So let's show everything, show everything if you're gonna do this, right? So that's what I'm doing here, showing every single ensemble member all together. And you can see they're all really consistent. Yeah, there's a couple outliers here. And I know immediately people will freak out about those, but remember outliers are outliers for a reason, right? You can't discount them, but there's outliers there. There's also outliers over here, okay? That's what happens often. People focus on these and say, well, there's just as many over here. So you take the medium and that's what you're looking at in this scenario. So let's look at that density. This is a great way to look at this, shows the probability. And again, um, let me move, I'll move the map over here in a minute so you can see it, but we'll, we'll move it right there. And you can see, so the consistency of this, all of this traveling this way and a pretty tight churn here somewhere near Bermuda. So if I'm in Bermuda, that's where you need to be worried right now. Bermuda is the biggest concern. East Coast, we're just kind of like at watch phase here. We're just kind of keeping an eye on what's happening here. Let's break the ensembles down by the two biggest models of ensembles, the GFS and the European. We'll look at the GFS. I'll move my head back over here. 
these are the GFS ensembles. And we're going to just go out through 10 days because even 10 days is too far, in my opinion. But going any further, you're just looking at that kind of junk. So this is 10 days into the future. Notice all of the GFS ensembles. I'm going to stop it at 10. Let me, there we go. All the GFS ensembles are all pretty consistently offshore near Bermuda. There are a couple right here, which is why you don't want to discount those. But the consistency is all here. So the GFS has a couple members that take it closer to the US. Let's show you the European model. We'll go out to 10 days, same kind of setup here. We'll stop it at 10 days. It's the same kind of setup. Oh, maybe, I. Oh, sorry about that. We'll probably make it back to 10 days here. 10 days, about the same setup. If anything, the, the European is a little further east, Bermuda East, but it also has two little outliers to the west. So that's four total members out of those two models. That's why you cannot write this thing off. So as much as I'm, I'm fairly certain right now this will miss the U.S., I'm also fairly certain that it's not certain, <laughs> okay? Basically, it's not written in stone. There is still the possibility this could come close to the United States. And because it's such a powerful system, you don't want to play chicken with it. So you need to pay attention. But here's the thing. There is plenty of time to watch this. This is 10 days into the future, okay? Today is the 5th. 10 days from now is what? The 15th, okay? And it would still be somewhere down here. Even the outliers, it still would be a, a day or two away from the East Coast, maybe even more or less, depending on speed. So that's what I'm saying. You got a ton of time to watch this. Everybody, right, rightfully so, will sometimes say, hey, Brad, what about Florence or these other ones, which looked like they were going to recurve? Yes, they ended up heading our way, but it wasn't like they came here in a day. We saw them heading our way seven, eight, nine days ahead of time. If you're looking 14 days out and you say, oh, it's not heading our way, but then it starts to change, it's not going to sneak up on us, okay? What I'm saying is if it does shift and it looks like it's heading our way, there would be seven, eight, nine days heads up. It's not going to sneak up on us. So that's why it's like one of those things, you watch it, but you don't freak out about it because you'll have time to keep an eye on it. So let's look at the steering currents because that's probably the biggest thing. So what's going on? With the steering currents here so let me kind of frame this up a little bit better here so you can see it so this is the 500 millibar um winds here and what's driving this is what always drives everything the big bermuda high which is not always over bermuda let me change my color here so you guys can see it a little better hopefully you can see so there's our big bermuda high big high pressure system there it's like a big gear in the atlantic everything kind of steers around it that's why things tend to recurve Depending on the position of the high, when we get storms, the high backs up this way and it shoves storms into the Carolinas or the East Coast. But let me show you what happens over time based on the current guidance. So we go into this weekend. The storm is just probably late weekend, maybe mid weekend. Looks pretty powerful, right? Heading into the Northern Caribbean, Southwest Atlantic. I'm going to stop this roughly around Monday morning, uh, Monday morning at let's say 8 a.m. So that's roughly right there, okay? So there's our high pressure. It's just to the north. It's still doing a lot of the work. Um, the high pressure system is right there. It's basically pushing things in, but there's also a dip in the jet stream, okay? This is the key part. This is what we call trough, right? A dip in the jet stream. Well, we don't want to look at the sounding, but that would be nice. Um, let me just move that out of the way so we don't see it. Um, you see that dip in the jet stream, and I'm actually moving it. That dip in the jet stream is pretty well forecasted. This is the cool down that's heading our way this weekend into early next week. That trough gets reinforced. It starts dipping, surges down here, and you can see that. There's a low pressure system right over the Great Lakes. So let me, let me grab my cursor here. So I got to move my uh, telestrator down to the bottom. Let's put it right about here because this is where you start to see a lot of this taking shape. So the high shifts off this way to the, to the east of the storm. The trough is digging in here and the clockwise flow around high pressure. It gives it a great little avenue to push to the northeast. The problem with this is um, how tight of a turn is that, right? You know, is the ridge going to build west? You know, it's always tough when you're making a sharp turn like that with a big storm it usually takes a lot more to move them. Big, big storms are like big ships. They don't turn on a dime. So the sooner you see this storm start drifting north and making that turn, the better. We don't want it to wait to the last minute because they tend to, they tend to struggle to do that. So 
when you're seeing this on, on the long range, it's all based on this trough digging down here and this high getting staying out to the east a little bit and opening up this long corridor for this to recurve. And again, this thing right here is the biggest player in this, in my opinion, because that thing has been pretty consistent in the modeling and I actually probably is better well forecasted than the, than the ridge. Just because it's over the continental United States, it's going to have more upper air sampling, more aircraft data. Um, so we will likely have a pretty good idea. But that's the steering mechanism right there out to sea, maybe affecting New England. New England's probably a closer call and the Canadian Maritimes. Um, but you can see the steering currents there. So we have plenty of time to watch this. That's kind of the best thing I can give you right now. I'll show you the wider view here again. This is the last track here. And again, this is Tuesday at 8 a.m. That's where it would be on the consensus track as a category four hurricane. So today is Tuesday. Next Tuesday, seven days in the future. So seven to eight days, it's still way out here, which means it would be another, you know, four or five days if it hit the U.S. So this thing is not going to sneak up on us. The thing we'll watch this week is how far north does it form? Does it, does the center form up here? Does it form down here? Right now, it's probably a little bit further north of this. And watch these consensus tracks. Is the trend going to be like this or is the trend going to start doing this? And we can look at some of these trend graphics. And I'll kind of show you these. I like looking at these um, when you look at these summary. All four runs here. We'll show you these trends and I'll move my head out of the way. So you can see the, the, the pinker colors or the brighter colors show the trend kind of shifting north. That's what we want to see. If we're going to get a little bit more worried over the coming days, we would be worried about these trends of these these shifting this way okay so you want to see this trend either consistent or like that and the trend is your friend as we say in meteorology so we've got plenty of time to watch it um it's nothing to worry about right now but as always when you're heading towards the beginning of september you should be paying attention but now we've got a system out there and oh by the way 96l if it starts recurving it's likely going to help weaken the ridge as well so that they could interact and that's another reason why you can't compare this to storms like florence or um, other ones that came in from way out there because this one actually has a, a storm behind it florence didn't have a storm behind it it was all by itself so this will be kind of a, a tracer it'll tell us what's going on in the atlantic and how things are steering so we got plenty of time to watch it that was a long vlog today but i wanted to break down some of the details as we looked at something that is probably 10 to 12 days away still at least 10 days um, away from anything to worry about, just something to keep an eye on as we go into the weekend and early next week. So just keep checking back as we go into the weekend.